Hi Countryside, it's Joe Smith, your general manager, and I am here today with two of our regulars, I would say, in the bar here in the Lakeview Lounge. Pretty much golf days. Um, golf days, yeah. yeah. Uh, George Greenwood and Manly Vita. And uh, we're continuing this series that we're putting together with some members to talk a little bit about um, this renovation project that uh, the Master Plan Committee's been working on and we've been having some meetings about. So, guys, thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. Um, You're welcome. Just uh, want to have a casual conversation, kind of learn a little bit about you two and what brought you to Countryside and then get some thoughts on the project and kind of uh, hear what you're hearing out in the neighborhood so um appreciate the time thanks thank you so tell me a little bit uh you both have been here for a number of years countryside 16 so, years 16 and 20, I think you told years. Me 20 20 years that's incredible so what attracted you here initially actually it was trying to come down to florida and just looked online and, and countryside was one of the cheaper places to rent so i just kind of stumbled on just by this stupidity yeah and, and ended up staying here for 16 years yeah and so you were a renter first and renter for the first yeah first two months wow wow yeah. so when when you first got your uh roots into the community what hooked you you know just naples community you know in the community of naples kind of in the country uh-huh you know five minutes from downtown you know 10 minutes from the beach you're 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 there yeah you know yeah uh, and the golf course yeah you know being uh just a happy hacker the golf course was easy to play right you know yeah. and, and the staff giving. yeah yeah great yeah. we've had a great team you know. absolutely mr vita how about you i rented all over florida and then uh i came to the west coast for the first time i stayed in bonita i came down here i looked around i called up a real estate agent she brought me to glen eagle she brought me to forest glen and then i came here when I came here, I met some people over in Province Way, mm -hmm. and they were just fabulous. And I said, this is the place for me. So I came into the, into the bar area and was speaking to the staff. And I said to the staff, the waitresses, I said, how do the people treat you here? Do they call you by your name or do they go, hey, you? Yeah. And they said, no, everybody here is like really so nice. Yeah. And I said, that's great. You know, I wasn't that worried about the staff because the staff changes over the sure. years. Sure. But the people are basically kind of the same. Yeah. And it's just a very down to earth community. Yeah. It's it's really a, a great place to live. Um, the golf course brought me here. The amenities brought me here. The clubhouse, the, you know, the whole the whole thing. Yeah, the whole package, package. lifestyle. The whole lifestyle. Yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned the staff. I know um, when I was being recruited for the position, that was one of the things that was really attractive to me was just the amount of tenure um, with n not only my predecessor, but with our entire team here. I mean, we've got a gentleman on golf course maintenance who's been here for 31 years, pretty there, much from the, base, from the beginning. Yes. The staff has, you know? is continuing to be here. Yeah, and yeah. you do, you're right. You see a lot of turnover in this industry down here. and. You know, to be able to have a staff, our average um, tenure here at the club is 15 years. You know, so that's really what makes these communities special is when we can build those relationships and provide the experience. So um, it's just, it's a it's a huge benefit to Countryside. It is a huge benefit. Yeah, it's, it it's, is. It, the, the staff really makes the place. Yeah, absolutely. And I continually hear how friendly it is. And I can vouch for that myself because this was uh, my sixth or seventh community certainly the most friendliness, you know, in terms of just people welcoming you. You know, it's a, it's a family environment, yes. you know, which is important. So, so we wanted to talk a little bit about this project, um, and I'm interested in your thoughts. Um, Mr. Greenwood, you, you've got a background in food and beverage, and, and this is, the project's kind of heavy on the food and beverage side, food service side, um, but tell me what you think about it. What do you like? What don't you like? Um, being from the food and beverage, doing the same thing of a small little kitchen that I had to expand. Mm -hmm. Anytime you want to do more people, it needs more equipment. Yeah. More equipment means more coolers, more space, more china, and everything like that. Uh, to where we want to do stuff bigger. Mm -hmm. 
the, the space, the kitchen's pretty small. Yeah. You know, they, they get deliveries. I see trucks here six days a week. Yeah. And, and if I had a delivery six days a week, it would drive me mad. Right. You know, so that's, that's, and so that would help out more space. And everybody says, well, what do we need space for? If you got 500 plates, 500 plate pieces of China, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you got to store them somewhere. Yeah. You know, so storage is storage is storage, you know, uh, and with a new progressive, with Joe being a progressive manager, stuff's going on to where it's not like we need space for a thousand people, yeah. you know, for the concerts and stuff like yeah. that. And you shouldn't have to shut the whole kitchen down. If you do it right, you should be able to do a concert and still bar food with yeah. bigger kitchen, more storage, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's certainly uh, one of the things that the committee was really zeroed in on was um, giving us the opportunity to, to to do things simultaneously, you know, because right now we're, we're handcuffed with certain events where, you know, if it's a large event, that's really yeah. all we can do, you know, and some members unfortunately aren't able to attend. You know, that's because it, of that. it's, yeah. it's, and it's, it's nature of the business, sure. you know, you got it all hands on deck to handle everybody yeah. thinks it's pretty easy. 250 is pretty, is, is not that easy. Yeah. You know, didn't throw a hamburger in there in the mix of everything else. You know, it's, it's well. You know, I, I really appreciate your your experience because as we were just talking about, you know, the staff we have yeah. here and retaining them in the tenure. You know, projects like this aren't always completely for the members. I mean, yes, absolutely yeah. they are, but when we can improve the things behind the scenes and how the work environment is and how we function operationally. You know, it makes the staff's life a little bit more enjoyable as well yes. at work. So there's a lot of that that's that's kind of happening also. You know, I was at, at Italian night last week, and mm -hmm. the tables that are in there aren't the tables that are always in there. So yeah. nobody realizes that they have to move everything out of the room to yeah. bring all new stuff back in, and and just the nightmare of setting everything up. Yeah. And where to keep all that stuff yeah, that you had, the storage, yeah. you, you know, and so you, you just, it's a, yeah. it's a logistics nightmare. It can be, certainly, yeah. it can be. How about, uh, Mr. Vita, what, what are your initial thoughts on the project, the proposal? I, I, um, I think the project is a good idea because, you know, people, you know, you maintain your home, you maintain your car, you yeah. maintain everything. Why not maintain your, the facility where you live, enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. um, a, a big thing I hear is that why don't we, you know, it's only for four or five months out of the year. Yeah. Why did we do our golf course? It's only for four or five months out of the year. Oh, that's a good point. But yeah. it needed to be done. You know, if we want to keep up our property values, this is the time to do it. Yeah. If we had done this five years ago, we'd be spending two-thirds of this money you know or maybe even less um, it's just it's just a uh, it's just a, a good thing for the for the whole place yeah. you know it's gonna give us more things to do uh, the pool area with the bar area I think that's gonna become a destination spot where mm -hmm. you can go go hit some balls have lunch maybe have a cocktail yeah it's you know and have the pool there and have a look out at something nice you know uh, you know me being a not a young person but not an old person you know sometimes when you think about the older traditions the older people like things simple mm -hmm. but people who want to buy now want something a little more extravagant they want something a little more not extravagant but up to date yeah and it's just going to keep our property values moving up yeah as they have and and i think it's just a great thing <clears throat> well and i think about um like not necessarily extravagant but modernizing modernizing not only the look and feel of the club but also the style of service and what we're able to offer um you know you mentioned the the pool and the pool bar um you know essentially one of the things that the project allows us to do is we're providing we would be providing three unique dining venues each with its own menu each with its own style of service each with its own look and feel you know the pool bar area would be very casual you know shorts and and t-shirts and 
you know, flip flops. And then you have the dining room, which is a little bit more upscale and, you know, a, a, a maybe a larger menu there. And then you would have this space, which I, I want to talk to you guys about this space too, but this would be your typical grill bar type, you know, um, um, you know, experience. So you've got three unique venues, which is, you know, something that we don't have today. That's, that's right. something that we really need because a lot of people, I come in here every, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Sunday, and I have lunch, and people tell me there's no hot dog on the menu. Yeah. There's no this on the menu. There's no that on the menu. I says, because the menu would be like 10 miles long. Yeah. Yeah. I says, you know they serve it. You know, they'll make anything right. you want. Right. But, you know, if you're not, if you don't know then you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna ask for it. If we have the different places, you know, you can have your grill room mm -hmm. where you have your burgers and your, all your stuff, you know, and you can have your fine dining or your dining room where you can have your dining and then you can have your outside tiki bar where you can have your bar food. Yeah. And it's just gonna give you a great range of choice to where you wanna be. Yeah. I mean, essentially, you think of it like this, you could come to the club three times in one day and get a different experience every time. Yes. Dressed in any, pretty much any attire. Sure. Yeah. You know, so that you got yeah. the beach wear, so you could, you know, you, you, we've all been in the dining room and people walk in with the wrong attire. Sure. There's, a, there's an outlet for them now. Instead of telling them that they have to leave, there's yeah. at least an outlet. Yeah. Uh, we've always been looking for more outside dining. Yeah. So the grill area is going to have an outside dining area. Mm -hmm. The bar is going to be a little bigger, kind of a horseshoe to where it can, you know, more yeah. of a type sports bar that, that every place else yeah. is. Let me ask you about that. So we're, we're in the Lakeview Lounge yeah. right now. Um, I talk with you guys usually a couple times a week yeah. in this room where yeah. you're having lunch. Yes. So, you, so you're familiar with the bar. Um, what are your thoughts on the redesign or the proposed redesign of this area with yeah. the circular bar? The circular bar, I mean, that's that's the, the thing. I mean, you've got a view, so everybody can get a view yeah. of, of the golf course and that's the whole yeah. side. Uh, I don't, you know, the bar stools are always full. Yeah. So yeah. you better get in early or else yeah. you don't get a bar stool. You've only got a dozen of them. You know, to where that's, it, it seems to be a popular spot. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's, that definitely needed uh, some attention there. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the horseshoe bar with, with everything and the TVs and, you know, it's going to be a great sports bar or something like that. Yeah. Lend itself to just a more social environment. Right. You know, where you can talk to people across yeah. the bar yeah. and be, you know, that more social atmosphere and that's what and, and after golf that's what everybody's looking to do anyway yeah you yeah. know so um i wanted to touch on too is with anything of this magnitude when you start sharing some uh proposals and you know talking about uh what potentially could happen you certainly don't have everyone in support no. um so i'm curious you know from you two, what are you hearing from some of your peers? Um, what are some of the questions? Um, you know, what are some of the concerns? I know there's concerns out there. For me, it's the pool area. You yeah. know, everybody says, George, they don't use the pool now. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's no reason to go to the pool. You know, I said, if you put a big pool in there with laps and everything, it's gonna be a destination. Yeah. You know, and so people are gonna pack up their kids and everything and come down and it's going to be busy it's going to be because it's going to be you're going to have a grill room there you're going to be able to spend the day there uh and right now all it is is just a pool sure there's no activities yeah. there's there's not going to be nothing there uh, and it's kind of if the old saying if you build it they will come mm -hmm. uh, so that's about the only thing i hear is that over the pool yeah uh you know the money's the money yeah you know mm -hmm. it's a 10 year it's a 10 year plan spend the yeah. money you know everybody's putting money into their units mm -hmm. so the tenure it, the ten thousand dollars for the the cost is over the ten years is is yeah. in my opinion pretty minimal, minimal. Yeah. yeah you know yes uh, i agree with mr greenwood it's 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 uh it's definitely the pool area that i hear uh i know the pool needs a lot of renovation yeah, it does our yeah. existing pool yeah and i know that the cost is way up there. And if they renovate the pool, they're gonna have to do the patio because they're gonna have mm -hmm. to pull up to dig up the lines. I mean, I'm in construction. I, you know, they, they're not just gonna come in and marble dust the pool and be done with it. Right. They're gonna have to do new lines, they're gonna have to do this, they're gonna have to do that. So they're gonna have to pull up the patio anyway. Yeah. 
you know so it, it's going to be a big job to do the pool it's it's not just a you know a, a minor repair yeah. so why can't we take that money and invest it in the new pool and we can have something nice to look at because right now nobody comes to the pool because it's a square pool with a hot tub yeah. everybody has one we yeah. all have one most do. Most yeah. do. Well, you know, everybody in a in a in, in the condos, in the yeah. condos, yeah. and and verandas. But, but you know, the thing is that if we have some place to go and hang out, and you know, have a soda or a beer, or, you know, go to the range, yeah, you know, have a burger or whatever, it's a great thing. Yeah. Well, um, and, you know, one of the things that we just as a normal course of business, you know, we have to as the, as the management, we have to protect our assets. You know, so like you said, the pool is an asset. So regardless of if we touch the pool, there's still about a hundred thousand dollars of deferred maintenance that we have to just put into the hole in the ground. And then, as you mentioned, when you start looking at that, you know, you start talking about the decking and the fencing and, and the stuff that surrounds it. I mean, we're we're into the existing pool probably three hundred grand um, just to maintain the asset, which it's our duty to do that. Yes. You know, so um, when you're talking about those numbers um, and, you know, the proposed project that surrounds that area, um, like you said, do you just invest in, in enhancing it? Another thing I've, I've heard about is, you know, why are we expanding? Why are we doing this? The clubhouse, the, the, um, the existing dining room only holds about 220 people. Yeah. We have an event. Nine times out of ten, if you don't get there the first day or the second day, sold it's out. sold out. Because 220 people are basically 10% of our population mm -hmm. at Countryside. Mm -hmm. So 10% is really not a lot, you yeah. know. And we're going to pick up a lot of seating. And uh, it's just, I think it's a good thing. Another thing I hear is we're going to be closed for a year and a half. Yeah. And... People don't get that, it, you know, that I've spoken to you this, about this before. You're a pretty sharp guy. You know, we're going to try and do the grow room first, the kitchen, so we can get operable yeah. within the first, you know, certain amount of time. Yeah, the idea would be that the, the project would occur, you know, consecutively over, you know, call it 12 months, but we would look to open certain areas before the entire project's complete. Um, and then even, we're still working through all, all those logistics, but you know, even during the massive portion of the project where the kitchen's completely down, we would have some sort of food service available. You know, it would be limited um, just because of the nature of things, but we would not completely shut down. Um, we, we just, we, we'd want to maintain some level of service. So, That's a good thing. Yeah, I, well, I think it is because, you know, as you mentioned before, one of you said, you know, it's, it's for four or five months a year. Well, there's a number of residents who are here 12 months a year. Yeah. You know, and we're always, you know, managing that. And, you know, we still have to provide a, an experience, you know, those other eight months, you know. So, you know, we live through the golf course renovation. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. can, we can do this as a community, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, you're progressive enough that you'll have food trucks here you'll have stuff here and you're yeah we're putting and, and, some plans yeah. together now um yeah. it could be really fun you know yeah. I, I mean i'm of the belief there's a there's a solution for every problem yeah. we, you know nothing that we come across is is uh, earth shattering it's so it can't be fixed we can figure it out okay um as far as the golf course and the wellness center you guys were both here when they did the wellness center yes. the tennis complex so you know we've had some really successful capital projects um this is a continuation of that. I'm sensing you think that's that's important, you know, to continue that. When the wellness center, you know, it was the same scenario with the wellness center. We had the small little room, and everybody says nobody uses it. Yeah. Once again, there was no reason to use the little room because it was just a little room. There was three people in there. It was busy. With the new wellness center, there's people in there. I mean, I drove around the other night at 8 o'clock at night, and I looked in there, and there was people in yeah. there using it. Yeah. You know, uh, the golf course last year, the golf course was the busiest we've ever been. Right. You know, and that's it wasn't because of COVID. 
It was just because the golf course is busy. Yeah. People are playing yeah. and, and everybody wants to play. The golf course is nice. It's it's the play is there. Yeah. And so the two projects that we've done mm -hmm. has increased you know, everybody's using it. Yeah. And, yeah. and it'll be the same thing with the with yeah. the new facilities. Yeah. Well, I agree. I mean I, I, I truly believe that. So um yeah, we'll we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. So anything else you guys wanted to, to touch on today or any any other thoughts you wanted to share? Not really. I mean no. it's it's I, I, I mean I just I just want to say that you know it, it, I think it's a great thing and uh, you know it's just the right thing to do at the right yeah. time you know yeah. yeah well we've got a long ways to go yeah. but um, you know the the committee has another series of meetings um, in January and um, you know there's going to be a lot more communication and and you know we're doing some of these videos with some other members and really I think the focus right now needs to be sharing the correct information so correct. people can make an educated that's, decision that's the whole thing get you know, people informed yeah there's very the, the the thing is that everybody tells you one thing then another person tells you another thing that everybody has a different sure. conception of what's going to be happening sure and that's not everybody is not on the same page yeah yeah. And you that's know, not countryside. That's I think human nature. It you know, is. One yeah. person we're going to knock down the clubhouse. Yeah. The next person yeah. we're just going to renovate the clubhouse. Yeah. yeah. You know it's so yeah. everybody has to be informed, you know, of what we're doing and the reason we're doing it, and how it's going to be financed. And yeah. because they just don't understand the financing part sure. of it. Yeah. Um, I've heard some pretty wild things, but but you know. People need to be informed. Well, as we continue to you know move forward, we're going to get a lot more information out, um, and you know the the financing thing is still really early right now, so we don't have a lot of specifics, and there's still some uh, conversations we're having with you know our legal counsel and whatnot to make sure that we we structure it all correctly. But the goal is for all of our members to have a clear understanding of of the the scope of the project. The scope of the project. Um, and not just the 12 months of construction, yeah. but the 10 years of, of, you know, potentially paying for it. Want right. everyone to understand that. So. And uh, another thing is people are worried about ongoing costs mm -hmm. for servers yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Which I think that the revenue that we're going to take in yeah. from having the three different areas is going to yeah. more than cover... Yeah, our, our early projections now on operating cost is um, figuring our, our revenue offset. We're looking at about fifty to sixty-five dollars per membership per year in additional um, operating cost, and that's you know we're pretty conservative with the revenue projection. Yeah. So um, really, on the on the food service side, it's not you know a, a major increase to operate the additional additional areas and there's also the, the question out there about the food minimum and there's no plans to increase the food minimum yes so that, that's that would, another thing that would stay. okay yeah. and another good thing about here is that I noticed we've been getting people who are training in the bar area mm -hmm. and that's a great thing because you can move people from one area to another yeah. area so they're not only servers they're bartenders yeah they do everything yeah. And that's a great thing because you can maneuver your men around. You know, like I'm in construction. I can put laborers here, I can put masons yeah, there. It's all cross training. Yeah. It's all cross training yeah. and, you know, having the manpower to do what you want to do and utilize them in the right way, in the most profitable way for you. Yeah. You know? Excellent. Well, guys, um, as we talked, I think the most important thing right now is getting correct information out there and educating yes. people. and. Your time today has added to that, so thank you very much. Um, really enjoyed chat, chatting welcome. with you. Um, you guys are great supporters of the club. Um, we try to we, be. We, well, you, you don't try that hard. You're here, and it just it seems natural. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, we appreciate it. We really do. Countryside, hope this. Um, hope you're enjoying these videos. Uh, as always, if you have questions, comments, feedback about the project or any of our operations. 
uh, you know where to find me. Um, in the office, shoot, shoot me an email or just pop in. Um, always, always available to chat and answer some questions. Guys, thanks, thanks again for your time Thank today. You. We'll see you around the club real soon. Thank you.